Friend Irma. Created by Cy Howard, transcribed from Hollywood, and starring Marie Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. philosopher once said, to err is human, to forgive divine. I want you to meet the divinest person in the world, me, Jane Stacy. Because every hour on the hour, I am forgiving my friend Irma. Jane. Yeah, what is it, honey? Are you thinking of baking a cake today? No, I don't think so. Why? Well, I may want to stick my head in the oven and take gas. <laughs> what? Oh, don't worry about me. You go right ahead and enjoy yourself. Now, what is this all about? Are you angry because I won't take you with me to my club meeting tonight? Yeah, and I want to know why not. Well, for one thing, you wouldn't understand the discussions. We of the 20th Century Philosophical Society talk about Albert Einstein, Salvador Dali, William Shakespeare. So what? Boiled down is like any other girls' club, a bunch of women talking about fellows. <laughs> Just forget it, Irma Yes, yeah, so I'm not good enough to associate with your friends It's not that at all Then I'm too stupid I didn't say that Well, then you don't think I'm stupid? I didn't say that either <laughs> it's, it's just that, for instance, last week we discussed the topic What is to be gained by piercing the supersonic barrier? Now, what would your comments be? Well, I'd speak my mind. I'm against all surgical operations except tonsils and adenoids. <laughs> there, you see what I mean? Yeah. Cookie, I personally would love to take you to the meetings, but I barely got into this society myself. Yes, I'm just an outcast. A forgotten old horse sent out to pasture. Hey, Trigger. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop off on your way to the glue factory, pick up today's mail? <laughs> Mail? Yeah. Oh, Mrs. O'Reilly brought it up this morning. Here it is. Oh, thanks, honey. Ah, bills, bills, bills. Irma, here's a letter for you. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's from home. That's nice, honey. What do the folks have to say? Well, it's from my father. I can tell by my sister's handwriting. <laughs> hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember. Your father can't write. That's right. Now, let's see. Uh, uh -huh. Dear daughter, it goes to show... That no matter how dark things look, there's always a brighter side. Uh, yesterday, sweet little Florabelle was hit by a truck. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Who's Florabelle? My mother's pet cow. They were very close friends. <laughs> Gee, the whole family was very sentimental about Florabelle. Every time mother had a baby, Florabelle had a calf. <laughs> <laughs> they had the same doctor. <laughs> Gee, he must have been a busy little man Calling for lots of hot water and plenty of straw <laughs> What else is new? Oh, Jane, this is exciting What is? Listen, your brother Gerald has been doing very well On his lecture tour across the country Your brother? Yeah. Is a lecturer? Yeah, he's a genius in our family Well, what do you know? Yes, Gerald was always experimenting I remember one year he made a big explosion in the hen house. Yeah, there were feathers all over the place. Poor mother, she had to knit sweaters for 22 chickens. <laughs> Read on, Cookie. Uh, Gerald writes he is winding up his lecture tour this week in New York, and he will visit you on the 22nd. That's three days from now. Gee, my own brother Gerald, a famous lecturer. I can't get over it. So that's where all the Peterson brains went. <laughs> Come in. If you don't mind, it's me, Maestro Wanderkim. Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little sweethearts. Like, like a Sunday dinner from soup to nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Maestro. Yeah, well, girls, what's new? Irma just received a letter from home, Maestro. Her brother, Gerald Peterson, is a lecturer, and he's been on a nationwide tour. Irma's brother is a lecturer? Mm-hmm. Irma, I didn't know you had such a distinguished brother. Oh, our family's nothing to be ashamed of. Yeah, well, uh, tell me, how many children are there in your family? Uh, besides Gerald, there are nine of us. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, what are their accomplishments? Well, six of us are failures, uh, but we don't know about the other three because they haven't done anything yet. <laughs> if uh, if uh, such a, a celebrity is coming to visit us, I think we should uh, we should take appropriate steps to entertain him. Oh, that's all right. You don't have to bother. Besides, Jane's going to be so busy with her club meetings. Busy? Who, me? Why, Cookie, you're coming to the meetings with me. I am? Mm-hmm. You and your brother. Wait a minute. I've got a wonderful idea. What, Jane? You know that Hazel Carson, the president of our club? Well, she's been so uppity since she brought that novelist to lecture at our last meeting, and this is just my chance to get even with her. I'll invite the entire club here, and we'll have your brother lecture, and let Hazel see that we know intellectual people, too. Gee, imagine me going to meetings and discussing culture. You know, things like music and art. Of course, I always have loved music. You have? Yes, why, only the other night Al took me to a concert, and I heard Beethoven's Unfinished Symphony. Wait a minute, honey, wait, wait. Uh, uh, <laughs> Beethoven never wrote an unfinished symphony. I know, but Al didn't have any tickets. When the usher came, we had to leave. Oh. <laughs> well, i got to get busy and arrange things right now, and I am going to do them up real. Who are you calling, Jane? You'll see. Hello? Hello? Uh, Miss Carson? Hazel Carson. Hello, this is Jane Stacy. Yes, I-, I would like to invite all the girls of the Philosophical Society to a special meeting in our apartment this Friday afternoon. What's the occasion? Well, my roommate, Irma Peterson, you know, Miss Peterson, Irma Peterson's brother is a distinguished lecturer. Hmm? Of course not, you know I don't drink. <laughs> would you please notify the membership? What? Just a moment. Irma, is your brother a linguist? No, he throws right-handed. Thanks. (laughs) Uh, Miss Carson, I assume the lecture will be in English. Bye. Oh, that's taken care of. Now we'll invite all our friends, the maestro and Mrs. O'Reilly, Richard and his mother. Jane, do you think my Al fit in at this meeting? Yeah, if he'll stay in the kitchen and chop ice. (laughs) Uh, Jane, by the way, uh, where is Irma's uh, brother staying? Staying? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I forgot all about that. I suppose he'll go to a hotel or something. Why, have you any suggestions? Well, that uh, it all depends what he lectures about. If he's an expert on, on wild animal life, he'd enjoy staying in my room. Right now, it's open season. <laughs> This would positively be the end of the human race. (laughs) Yoo-hoo! Anybody at home? Come on in, Mrs. O'Reilly. Hello, girls. Hello, maestro. Greetings. Well, look at you. What stunning new shoes. What's the occasion? Oh, nothing special. But Cinderella always has to be ready in case some Prince Charming should come along and want to drink champagne. Pain out of one of her slippers. <laughs> or take a bath in the other. <laughs> I'll have you know I wear a size five shoe. Yeah, it must be wonderful to have feet you can fold in half before you put them in the shoe. <laughs> Another remark like that and you're going to get a very close look at me shoe. But where I put it, you won't be able to see it. <laughs> now, Look, before you get into that, Miss O'Reilly, let us give you the news. Irma's brother is a very successful lecturer, and he's coming here. Glory be, Irma's brother? Yeah, I can't oh. blame you for being surprised. Knowing Irma, anyone would assume that the rest of her family was, uh, um, D-E-M-E-N-T-E-D? They are not Democrats. <laughs> I, 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 I just, uh, I can't get over it. Irma's brother should be such a brilliant man. Well, it happens in many families that children are completely opposite. Take me. I have a sister who is not at all attractive. <laughs> You're the pretty one? That's what they say. How much did they charge to see the other one? <laughs> 
here admiring each other. There's so much to do. Mrs. O'Reilly, you're invited to the lecture here this Friday. Oh, how nice of you, Janie. Shall I bake a cake? No, they are not discussing the Stone Age. <laughs> uh, Janie, darling, is there maybe anything I could bring for the lecture? Well, Maestro, um, do you have any extra chairs? Yeah, yeah, I have, uh, I have a, a large folding chair. Maestro, I don't recall giving you a folding chair. No, but you gave me a sofa, and any time anyone sits on it, it falls up. Well, just bring yourselves to the meeting. I'll take care of everything else. Hey, look what time it is. Come on, Irma, we're going to be late for work. Oh, don't worry about me, Jane. I don't have to be there early today. Mr. Clyde has to go to court this morning. Oh, defending someone? Yes, himself. <laughs> Threw an inkwell at me and hit the landlord. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Peterson. Oh, how'd you make out at court, Mr. Clyde? I was fine, fifty dollars. The next time I throw anything at you, don't you dare duck. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Clyde, guess who my brother is? Your brother? Yes. Now, don't tell me. Let me figure this out for myself. Your, your brother. Well, offhand, I would say he was the village idiot. <laughs> no. A stand-in for the headless horseman? No. Well, I've exhausted every clue you've given me. I give up. My brother happens to be a very brilliant man. Your brother? Yes. Well, now, wasn't that mean of him to take everything and leave nothing for you? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what, what does this brilliant brother of yours do? He's a lecturer, and, and Jane wants you and your wife to come over Friday to hear him. Friday, huh? Well, if we can get some work done today, maybe I can find time to make it. Shall we uh, have a go at some dictation? Okay, wait till I get ready. Let's see now. Uh, pencils, clips, eraser, carbon, typewriter ribbon, pad, fountain pen, ink eradicator, blotters, chewing gum, eye shade, scotch tape, binder. The Mayo brothers don't call for that many things when they go into surgery. <laughs> Are you quite ready now, my dear? I think so. Is this the office of Mr. Clyde? Uh, yes. Here are the two garbage cans you ordered. Two garbage cans? Yes, you told me to order two cans. You idiot, I told you to order two tickets for Can Can. That's a musical <laughs> show. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, mister, you better take the cans back and bring me two musical ones. What? <laughs> There's been a mistake. Get those things out of here. Okay. Can't you ever get things straight? Last year, I asked you to get me tickets for South Pacific, and you brought me steamship tickets for Australia. <laughs> Before I lose my mind, shall we calm down and take a letter? Yes, sir. Dear madam, my client instructs me to inform your husband that she was careful when she backed the bumper of her car into your hothouse and ruined your prize snapdragons. Sincerely, Milton J. Clyde. Got it. Read it back. Dear madam... My client instructs me that you better be careful because her bumper is dragging, and when she when she gets hot, she may snap at your husband. Oh. Get out of here! Get out, you idiots! But, Go home. Uh, all right, but will you come to my brother's lecture Friday? Yes, but only because your brother may discuss ivory hunting, and I want to see what a price he puts on your head. <laughs> Friday, the day Irma's brother arrives to lecture to the Philosophical Society. You know, I feel a little proud about it. I'm sure all of our friends and fellow club members are going to be impressed. Do you know what we've been doing these past two days? We've been having little cultural discussions so that we'll be ready if Irma's brother asks us questions after the lecture. Irma? Yes, Jane? Name the five continents. Salt, vinegar, mustard, pepper, and pickles. <laughs> Not condiments, continents. I'll give you a hint, honey. The first continent is North America. Now, what's the second? Um, South America? Good, good. Now, what are the other three? East America, West America, and Inside America. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, how stupid of me. I left out Minnesota. <laughs> Irma, read your geography book. 
Maestro, now come on. Yeah, yeah. You willing to try historical dates? Fire away. All righty. 1492. Discovery of America. 1776. Declaration of Independence. 1066. Norman Invasion of England. 50 B.C. Yeah, the birth of Mrs. O'Reilly. <laughs> Funny. Maestro, you'd better check the encyclopedia. All right. All right, Kathleen O'Reilly, it's your turn. Who was Madame Pompadour? She was the sweetheart of King Henry. And she had beautiful red hair, something like mine. All righty. Mona Lisa? That's a famous painting, and I'm told the smile on the girl resembles mine. <laughs> Sabu? Sabu? Mrs. O'Reilly, he's the elephant boy, and if you'll notice what he rides, you'll find a resemblance there, too. <laughs> now, look, we can't take this thing lightly because all my friends, including Mrs. Rhinelander, are going to be here, and I don't want any embarrassment of any sort. Well, I won't embarrass you, Jane. I already know all the five continents. Well, that's what I call a good student. Name them. Uh, North America, South America, Europe, Asia, and... Oh, gee, I always forget the fifth one. Well, wait a minute, honey. Maybe this will help you. Um, this continent is moist and humid, overgrown with jungles, and many men have died there. My room is a continent. <laughs> Irma, it's African. If you don't remember, I'm just... Come in. Hello, folks. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. Hey, what's this invitation I got? Are you on the level? Have you got a brother who is a famous lecturer? That's right, Al. Isn't it exciting? Well, personally, I'm not impressed. To me, lectures are all alike. A bunch of words, and they all end the same way. 30 days, 90 days, or report to your parole office. <laughs> It's not that kind of a lecture. But come to think about it, we don't know what he's going to talk about. Irma, our guests are going to be arriving any minute. You better bring out the hors d'oeuvres, honey. Do we have any salmon eggs? Yeah, but they're not any good. Why not? Well, I've had them in the oven all week, and not one of them hatched. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, just get the cheese and crackers, huh? Okay. Come in. It's Mr. and Mrs. Clyde. Hello. Won't you come in? Good evening, Jane. Hello, Irma. Oh, I'm so glad you could make it. Hello, Mrs. Clyde. Oh, hello, Mrs. O'Reilly. And you, Mr. Clyde. I always get such a kick seeing you. You look just like me poor dead husband. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Tell me, are you and the maestro still carrying the torch for each other? Well, lately he's been a little difficult. Mr. Clyde, you're a lawyer. Now, what's the law on breach of promise? Oh, is there a breach of promise involved? I promised to move, but she hid my trunk. <laughs> uh, shall we take seats, Jane? If you don't mind. Jane, have you any idea what the lecture's going to be about? Uh, no, no, Mrs. Clyde, but I'm sure it'll be interesting. I understand Irma's brother lectures all over the country. Yeah, and we're ready for anything. I, I've been practicing all week getting smart. Do you know there are five continents? Really? Yes. <laughs> uh, North America, South America. Uh, well, anyway, I know that Macaroni invented the first telegraph boy. <laughs> Come in. Good evening, Jane. Well, Mrs. Rhinelander, how nice. Uh, you know everyone here, I'm uh, sure. Yes, I think that's right. Rhinelander, nice to Well, if it isn't my dear friend, Mrs. Rhinelander, I see you've put on a little weight, cutie. <laughs> well, I suppose these summer cottons do fluff out a bit. Mrs. Rhinelander, you look lovely. And as far as weight is concerned, Mrs. O'Reilly may not be wearing cottons, but she's still got more fluff. <laughs> You two are still at it. Irma, I just can't tell you how thrilled I am to know I'm going to hear your brother speak. You must be very proud of him. Oh, that's nothing. Our whole family is talented. Do you know that my mother can milk a cow and knit a sweater at the same time? Of course, sometimes a sweater can only fit the cow. <laughs> Come in, girls. Hello, Hazel. Oh, Jane, this is such an exciting night. I do hope the lecture is as interesting as the novelist I had at the last meeting. 
Well, we can't expect to equal your accomplishment, Hazel. <laughs> After all, how many people write books on the sex life of tadpoles? <laughs> Will you uh, take the girls' coats? Right in the bedroom, girls. Well, I, I guess we're all here now. Oh, that must be him. Come in. Irma Peterson live here? Gerald, my own beloved brother. Hi, sis. Uh, this is Jane. Hello. Gerald, I can't tell you what an honor this is. We've all been looking forward to your arrival with breathless excitement. And just the thought of having you lecture to us, well, it's just too thrilling for words. Yeah, huh? <laughs> Gerald, these are all our dear friends and members of the Fellow Sloppy Society. <laughs> Philosophy. Nice to know you. Uh, how's the family, Gerald? Well, I haven't been home much. You see, my lecturing keeps me jumping around. But I did get a letter from Mother. He uh, went... Excuse me, uh, but can't we discuss this later when we're having refreshments? The girls are so impatient to hear your lecture. Well, uh, I Come hear. on, come on. You don't know how I've been looking forward to this moment. I kind of think of it as my hour of triumph. Okay? Okay, if you insist. Girls, if you'll all take your places. All right. Sit down. Oh, maestro, would you like to sit next to me? Why? Well, Gerald may lecture on the wonders of marriage, and you know... <laughs> he may also talk about the missing link, and I don't want to spoil his lecture by letting people think I found it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen and fellow members of the Philosophic Society... I can't tell you the honor I feel upon this occasion and how proud I am to have a roommate whose brother is so distinguished a personality. I don't know what Gerald Peterson is going to lecture about, but I know it will be a surprise we will never forget. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Peterson. Thank you. All right, folks, tell you what I'm going to do. You say you're feeling low. You say you're feeling run down. No, you then. Me? Yeah, you. Baggy face. <laughs> no, not baggy face. Your name's Mrs. Rhinelander. Uh, lady, it's plain to see you had your face lifted. Irma. But if you had only bought one little bottle of Mother hey. Clemens Indian Magic Snake Oil... Irma. It would have taken all them ugly wrinkles off your face. Irma. It would give you the spring of you... And a figure that would not make you look like an upholstered sofa looking for its mate. Irma. <laughs> Irma, where are you going? It's stuffy in here. I think I'll go outside and get a train to Minnesota. <laughs> My friend Irma came to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>